What's happening, everybody? Welcome to Toyota Voice, uh, Voices with Brooke Lopez. We're so thankful that Brooke took the time to hang out with us for a little bit. Now, the Lakers, Brooke, and Toyota have been together for over 41 years. That's a long relationship. That's fascinating stuff. Yeah, isn't that nice? It's so great. It's very good, okay. Uh, Brooke, we have a number of questions to ask you from folks uh, that have hit us on Twitter and Facebook and other places, and uh, I will get right to it. Here's one from Jonathan. He wants to know, what is your favorite place to eat in Los Angeles, Brooke? Favorite place to eat in Los Angeles? Yes. Ooh. Um, uh, I mean, after, I'm going to go with the simple answer. After being on the East Coast for eight years and being back home in California, and that's in and out. Mm. Understandable. It's like, yeah, I missed it so much. Now, you, so where have you spent, for people that don't know, the bulk of your time yeah. you know, that, you, okay. that you've uh, been in California? Uh, your, t- take us through the, the life, uh, the life, different houses and places you've been, lived. It, in, uh, throughout my history in California? Yes, All yes, right. yes. So I was uh, born in Pan- Panorama City, grew up in North Hollywood. Uh, then we moved to Washington, actually, for one year, because my brother played at the University of Washington, UW. And then we moved down to Fresno, California, where my grandparents were. And then I went to Stanford University up north in California. So I've been pretty much all up and down California. So yes. I'm a real, real Cali guy. Yeah, very, very much a real Cali guy. So, and you, you had to make the, well, you didn't make the trip, but you had to, your cat did make the trip recently. And a lot of people asked about that yes. story. So just yeah. give, give me the, the quick version of it, what happened. Of course, we right. had the, the wildfires, which were very scary uh, here in Southern California. Right. So um, I woke up probably like 6 a.m. to my phone going off. It was like that kind of alarm siren that when everyone gets the same like emergency notification saying that there were fires on the I guess east side of the 405 north like that was right where I was you know Uh, so you know I was freaking out a little bit naturally um, sure and I hadn't like we were about to leave on a road trip for a four-game road trip to the east coast I hadn't packed anything yet for the road trip I planned on doing that this morning so I'm like rushing packing uh, like looking out the window you can see like a orange kind of haze like a little glow uh, out my window. Now I'm like, uh, I called my agent, and my mom. First two people I called immediately. I was like, do I start packing stuff up? Do I like skip the plane? Like, what am I supposed to do here? I don't know the protocol. And then, like, the first thing after that, I think it was like, well, I'm bringing my cat with me, whatever I do. Of course. Yeah. yeah so I, I just, I packed my stuff. I brought the cat, uh, left everything else behind. You know, I tried to be optimistic yeah, what, about do, what it. What were some, do, do you, are you like, okay, a couple valuables like jewelry or, or, you know, I, tax, I, um, pay, uh, documents or anything or <laughs> no I, I brought my my computer okay. my cat um and then uh what I packed for the trip and then pretty much left everything else behind and, you know after the fact like I was thinking I, the most important things to me I was like I have a, a lot of like original art like uh ah. art, art by uh comic artist paintings you know various different things and uh, you know that that was the stuff. Like I mean, it was like, dang, I, I wish I remembered to br- bring that too. But right, it was yeah. after the fact, you know. That's and crazy. so um, I was with my cat in the car, and uh, I know I normally take the four or five to the practice facility, and then you know we had to practice and go to the airport. But uh, they completely shut it down, obviously, by the time I was there. So they backed us up uh, back through Beverly Glen, uh, and uh, we kind of winded a bit back there. There's a ton of traffic, and through the city. Uh, and I was able to meet with the 405. Um, I think they opened it back up after it, after the 10, where it meets up with okay. the 10. I think it, it meets, but anyway. Yeah, regardless so I, of eventually Yeah, regardless you got your... of all that, I got here to the facility. And uh, like at this point, I'm, I'm pretty much debate. I'm like, I'm going to bring Poupon on the plane with me. He's coming <laughs> on this road trip. You know, he's coming on this four grade road trip, whether Luke likes it or not. <laughs> my agent talked he, me he out. He can of try it. to wrestle the cat out right, of your hands yeah, and see what happens. Right, yeah. yeah, at that point, I mean, I'm, I'm too worried about him. Nothing's taken from me. Yeah. But uh, my agent talks to me. We agreed to leave him behind in the facility and then we'll get him to a cat spa. Well, while well, I'm on the plane, uh, my uh, agent, like, shot, well, actually, I didn't really get any communication on the plane, so I was freaked out a little bit. <laughs> okay. I was, like, freaking, like, you know, I thought I was going to land, and, like, I'd get a thousand calls saying, oh, your house burned down, you know, your cat's living in the facility. But uh, he's, my agent said, your cat wasn't up to date on shots. I don't know what you were doing with your cat, but he's out to date on shots. You're not taking care of him. Uh, he couldn't go check into the cat spot here, so we got your cat a car service. And we drove him up to Fresno to be with your mom. There, there you so, have it. Yeah. 
I, I mean, I don't know. I I guess I'm a good cat owner for yeah. paying for that for my cat. That's not frivolous and eccentric at all. But. No, look, I, I, I fully supported that move, and I think a lot of people did. I heard from yeah. a lot of people yeah, on I mean, Twitter about uh, that. Uh, yeah. You know, I had to do what I had to do. That's my yeah. guy. Well, look, I'm just glad that everything, all the rest of your stuff and the yard and everything, and, and you know, certainly anybody that, that experienced that is pretty scary to think about, okay, wait, what do I do? What should I grab? It's a, that's got to be a freak out moment. So, yeah, oh, yeah. no question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. All right, uh, moving on to the next one. What is your favorite Disney movie? Now, people, Brooke, uh, Brooke, people think that you are big into Disney, which is, which is fair, but maybe right. you can start from the growing up here and being able to go and it's you've that yeah. passion is carried through yeah absolutely you know uh like you said i grew up around here and um you know my twin brother older brothers and my mom we'd go to the parks all the time uh you know whenever we uh you know new animated movies or whatever came out we'd go see them and, and we just loved the the whole creative sense and the world building of all, all the different things and right. so uh we, we'd go to the parks and around with me, I would be like just totally immersed in the experience. We'd completely buy in and we, we loved uh, being around it. Um, for favorite movie, I'd have to say animated movie, for yeah. sure, 101 Dalmatians. Mm. And the, not to go back to a pet thing again, but I've always wanted a Dalmatian growing up, but my mom always shut it down. We were always on the road traveling, so we could never have a dog. So we are always a cat family, because cats can take care of themselves. I mean, I'm not trying to start like a cat dog. I mean, I know these people have yeah. been separated for years and at war, but cats can take care of themselves. You know, dogs are man's best friends, and they may... And women's. Yeah, and women's, too. Yeah. I'm not trying to create another thing. No. <laughs> but, uh, you know, dogs may outwardly show all that love and shower that love on people, but, you know, cats, they're, they're there, too. Yeah, you don't have to yeah. defend yourself. Yeah, can't, that's that's cool. Yeah. But but my question is now you're you know you're a grown man. Like yeah. you can if you want a Dalmatian, you could get a Dalmatian or two or three. So I could. What are you thinking? I mean, it's pretty much just me and the cat still. So I leave a lot, and I don't trust my cat with those dogs. That yeah. So that might be. No, he. Okay. No, he'd do them. In. Okay, but at some point though, maybe Dalmatians. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I probably if I had to pick, I'd probably go Lion King. I mean, yeah. I'd like Aladdin a lot too, but. Lion yeah, King's King solid pretty solid. They're yeah. both solid choices. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. All right, Nick would like to know who's your favorite teammate and why. And if you'd like, you, you can oh, go current Nick. or you can go all time. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's tough to choose from the current team. I can't just choose one guy. So if I had to go all time, and, you know, we actually just played him yesterday, but uh, I'd have to go with my vet, Vince Carter, no question. Mm. You know, I, I was a... Uh, I was a rookie when I played with him. He was, he was the guy I looked up to, uh, you know, tried to emulate as much as I could, and I learned so much from him uh, playing with him. So uh, you know, I, I just had the best experience. I mean, come on, he's Vince Carter, too. It was just, it was cool. You know, like little kid Brooke was like, dang, this is awesome. You know, I'm on the same team as Vince Carter, as Vince Sanity. Yeah, so that's so 08, 09? Yep. Okay, yeah, so your rookie mm -hmm. year, uh, what, any, any particular Vince stories of, you know, I'm sure. I'm guessing he dunked on you in practice at some point. Oh, he definitely dunked on me. In yeah, practice a yeah. Lot. And I mean, that's a recurring theme with me getting dunked on. But it was special when he well, did. You're, it. Look, you're going up to contest to, to try to block the shot or contest right, yeah. the shot. That's I your mean, job. I'm, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll always go to contest yeah, the shot. Yeah. I'm always gonna go try to block a shot. Yeah, that's your job. Um, okay. Let's see. At Joseph Tatool would like to know if uh, if you're gonna get that three pointer going for the rest of the season. Now this is coming off a game of course in which you were white hot right. from three brook, you hit five, you were pulling up from Steph Curry territory uh, and uh, it just clearly were in a rhythm. So what, uh, what uh, how did it feel particularly last night? Was it something you got, kind of got early, okay, the touch feels good today? No, no it wasn't really something that just, uh, you know, I was thinking like I'm gonna shoot him because I'm feeling good today. Uh, it's just, it's, you know, when I'm open, I have to take them. And uh, my teammates, my coaches, the staff, they have the confidence in me to shoot them when, uh, when it's the right shot, when it's the open shot. And, uh, you know, guys were fighting me yesterday. Julius, uh, KCP were finding me in good spots where I was open and sending me up for a, a great looks. And, you know, I just, you know, when it's open, I have to have the confidence to take it and shoot and know, uh, and know it's going to go in. All right, so let's see, eight, nine, ten, uh, you've hit 12 since, uh, 12 threes, so uh, in the four games since you've been back, so three a game at a 44% clip, so certainly um, something that's been, that's been going well lately. All right, uh, Christian Rivas would like to know, can Brooke rank the Star Wars movies? <laughs> um, I can rank the Star Wars movies. Okay. I, I'd probably Strap go. Strap in for this. 
For me, I definitely start with the original original trilogy at the top. For me, it'd probably actually go though, and this is tough. It's like minuscule differences between one, two, and three. But I'd probably go in reverse order: Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back, A New Hope, Star Wars. After that, um, hmm. So can anything penetrate that, or is the nostalgia plus the you know as a kid? Is that no, so? Those, I, that's... I don't think I don't think so. Yeah, okay. I mean. There, there is a lot of nostalgia there, but I mean, those are, I mean, well, what can be said about those movies already? They're such solid, amazing, solid, amazing movies, and there's a reason the franchise is at where it's now because of those three movies that started it all. Um, after that, uh, we got the prequels, the last three movies they made, uh, the Ewok Adventures, Caravan of Courage. Man, there's so much to choose from. Hmm. Um, What's the Ewok Adventures? The Ewok, you never watched the Ewok? You never caught the Ewok Adventures? I didn't catch that, but... Can, can you look them up? Or? I mean, sure. Like, yeah. you know, Ewok? Is that how you say E-W-O-K? Ewok, yeah, uh, well, there's no space, but that's all right. It'll fix oh, okay, it. Okay, all right, yeah. yeah. You know, look up. A little amateur on the Star Wars knowledge here. Yeah, that's all right. Ewok Okay, yeah, TV movie from 1984. Right? You, you never saw these? No, but... I, you know, I will, yeah. is it worth, how, how about this, you watch Game of Thrones, yeah. and I will watch um, the Ewok Adventure. They're, they're all right, I, I don't know if I'd put them up with Game of Thrones, but okay. again, like, Little Kidderbrook was all about Ewok Adventure, well, I mean, Ewoks, like, yeah, I was there. This is why we're surprised that we were chatting earlier, and I yeah. said, for somebody that has such an extensive knowledge in so many things, I would have I, expected I <laughs> that you would watch Game of Thrones, and That's, you said that you would Yeah, I, and I just, yeah, I don't, I don't know why I haven't caught it yet, I, I I feel bit like I, again. I watched. I saw the pilot, and then I skipped the last six seasons or whatever. And then during the summer, all my friends were watching the finale, and I saw the last five minutes of the finale. So I don't know why I watched the very beginning and the last five minutes of it. But I'm kind of caught up now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Just missing all the in between. Good. All right. That Darth Mamba would like to know. Hey Brooke, when's the comic book coming out that you and your brother are writing together? That's a, that's a great question, actually. So Rob and I have a lot of projects going on, but uh, one, uh, one very interesting uh, project we got going on uh, is a comic, and uh, it's actually a manga. And uh, we've been working on it for a long, long time now, you know, as long as we've been in the league for sure. Um, and this one does happen to be uh, basketball-based, and uh, it's... Uh, it's, um, for those who don't know, manga is a Japanese comic book. Uh, it's uh, based on a high school basketball player in Japan. Uh, and we're working to get a partnership with the NBA going on it. We have a fantastic uh, artist working with us. And uh, it pulls from a lot of different inspirations for us. And so uh, we're hoping to have that out very soon. It's something we've been working on for the past year extensively. That's pretty cool. Do I recall that? So does does uh, do you do some of the writing and Robin does more of the yeah. drawing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For this specific For thing, we found a separate artist. Oh right. But okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we've been working creatively. Okay. Cool. Together on it. Yeah. That's what's up. Uh, Colin would like to know. Hey Brooke, how many people in your life do you think have asked you how tall you are? Oh. <laughs> Colin. Colin might be talking. That's a that's a good question. I mean, He's Colin. Yeah. It, it's the <laughs> freshest spin on this question of all time. But it's like. <laughs> All, everything about it is so trite. Like, I mean, it, like you hear it every day and then people say like, you should get a t-shirt that says I'm seven foot and you should hand out the business card. So it's just all the same stuff. And if you're I, watching and you do that, then you know who exactly, you are. Exactly. Like yeah. I'm trying to make this a PSA and get yeah. awareness out. Like, please just like, let it be. I'm seven, seven feet tall. That's that. Like, like it's, it's just constantly every day and, and you get used to it. Like, and I can admit, I can, I can be a jerk about it some more than sometimes. They're like, you know, a little snarky, but I, you know, I'll, I'll try to be better about it. I try to, be, I try to be good about it. It's just, you know, is uh, as funny as I try to be. <laughs> every time you hear the same joke over and over, but I'll be good about it. Try, try to come up with some fresh ones. Yeah, it's just give me some fresh jokes. How about what, that? What, Brooke, we'll, meet, we'll meet halfway. What are some of your most typical comebacks to when people ask comebacks? you know questions about your I mean height. again I try not since they come back I try not to be snarky I try to be, oh yeah that's good yeah because <laughs> it's always the same like how's the weather up there you know and like 
oh, what sport do you play? Are you a jockey? Like all, <laughs> just all the same stuff over and over. Oh, and you, you do, you kind of just do a lot of. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, exactly okay. like that. Okay. Yeah. So okay. if if you if you guys come up to me and ask that, and that's what I get, yeah. just know what I'm thinking inside, really. Well, so that that's a, another something a, kind of along these lines. So I've got identical twin uh, sons, right? They're three, right. and so I, they're not at the point yet. But at some point, people are going to start asking them a billion questions that are probably going to annoy them, right? Right. And, and, and that you All and the twin stuff. The, right. Uh, the, so right. what's what are some of the more common? Because you already have to deal with the seven foot stuff, right? And then you yeah. have to deal with the twin stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's the twin stuff? The twin comes? stuff. Oh, the telepathy. Like, if I punched you, would Robin feel it? I mean, first of all, why would you even want to punch me? Why would you ask that? <laughs> like, who's gonna come up and punch me? Like, seriously. You are physically imposing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess they just want to <laughs> so, like come in the room and punch the biggest guy they can to make a statement. But. I think. Yeah. I think that's part of that. Yeah. Okay. The original JT says, I saw you and your brother at Disneyland once. Oh, no. What's your favorite ride there? Okay. <laughs> I was <laughs> going like, to around. Like, you were such a jerk to the original <laughs> I thought JT was going to say no. that. Okay, but, he, but he's being like, because he didn't bother yeah. you, right? right? Yeah. Which is respectful, yeah. and he didn't, you know, he, didn't, right. he just wants to know what your favorite ride okay. is. Uh, That's cool. Star Tours has always been my favorite ride. A big Star Wars guy. Uh, George Lucas, Disney collaboration with Star Wars, obviously. Uh, be up there for me, but I definitely love Star Tours, and the original Star Tours are my favorite, no question. Okay. Oh, this one is interesting. Uh, S. Lee says, Brooke, your mom is super cool. She was my math teacher in high school. Oh, no way. Really? Right here. Yeah. S. 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 Lee. S. Lee. Yeah. Uh, I guess S. Lee must have gone to Clovis West, a Fresno person. It's, it would yeah. appear so. I'm just Yeah, yeah I'm just I mean, that's, that's what I would think, yeah. yeah. Um, my mom... So I don't know if they're San Joaquin Memorial's rival, but they were a basketball rival in high school. Uh, and um, she taught at that school. And uh, she retired when we got drafted in the NBA, but she taught there for, she ended up teaching at Club West for, it must have been 96 to like 12 years, something like that. Mm. And so she taught a lot of students. And, you know, yeah. one of the coolest things I hear going back home is, you know, just I'll be at, River Park, which is a cool place to hang out in Fresno, and you know, Best Buy and Target and the movie theater, you know, everything you need. And uh, I'll, you know, I'll just have people come up to me and tell me, hey, I had your mom, uh, I had your mom as a math teacher in high school, and she's just the best. She was my favorite teacher. And it's cool to hear that from a lot of different people because she, she obviously touched me the same way, you know, and, uh, and uh, had that effect in my life. So it's cool to see the way she affected other people as well. That's cool. So thank you, Esley. Thank <clears throat> you. That's cool. All right. Jennifer says, I like your Hufflepuff shirt. Yes. Which Harry Potter book is your favorite and why? Which Harry Potter book is my favorite? <clears throat> um, now, don't spoil anything. So I've, I, I'm waiting until my kids get old enough to, because yeah. I've never read the books okay. or seen the movies. Okay. So is that a good point? Because then I can kind of read with them. Yeah. Should yeah. I do books first before movies? I think do the books first. Okay. Now, yeah. Gotcha. Now yeah, we'll get back to, sure. the, to the question. What's your yeah. favorite book and why? Favorite book? Um, I'd probably say... Prisoner of Azkaban and Goblet of Fire, probably those two. I think Prisoner of Azkaban and Goblet of, excuse me, Azkaban and Goblet of Fire, they probably, I think it was at that point where you really saw the series turn and go from where it was just kind of about Harry's school adventures to really opening up his world and you started to see so much more of the, of the magical world out there and what really what really uh, was in J.K. Rowling's vision, and there's just so much fascinating stuff she added to that uh, whole uh, to that whole world, I think. Um, and those are definitely my favorite. Now, movie-wise, I'd probably say, and this might not be as popular, but I'd probably say the first two movies are my favorite. I think they really do a good job. Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets do a really good job of kind of capturing that that feeling of magic and the, the fun and enjoyment and just that magical sense that, that would come with, you know, obviously going to a wizarding school and experiencing these things for the first time. Gotcha. Good stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, Mr. Excelsior uh, wanted to know, what's, what's Brooke's relationship with Ingram like? <laughs> My relationship with Ingram? Yeah, I don't know. Just randomly, but, you yeah. know. Hey, you know? That, that's a great question. Yeah. B.I. is yeah. my guy. and. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, on the court, I love playing with B.I. because he makes my job so much easier. Mm. 
Uh, he's such a threat, obviously, coming off the pick and roll or, or the dribble handoff and just obviously attacking the basket. He draws so much attention as well um, that, uh, you know, for me, I mean, obviously, he draws my guy and finds me for open threes, which is nice. But, you know, at the same time, he's just, he's just a, a sm such a smart player that, uh, you know, whether it's on a dribble handoff or – or cutting, you know, I feel like we have a very good two-man game going. And it's something I can see developing even more. You know, Brooke, you've played with uh, and or against a lot of good kind of big two-way wings. Uh, mm -hmm. Ingram just turned 20 in September. Yeah. I'm just wondering, what, what do you think his ceiling is? Like, a, and maybe not ceiling, but where, where do you think yeah, you'll mean, see him I get don't, to? I don't see him with a ceiling at this point, honestly. You know, for the things he's doing at 20 years old, uh, it's, it's really astonishing to watch. And, you know, I, I mean... Um, you see him on court, it's one thing, obviously, but just to see his work ethic and his dedication to the game, uh, it's, it's second to none. And uh, I mean, he's, he's the first one in here, you know, getting shots up, getting work in, uh, day in, day out, every day. And it's a testament to the kind of guy he is. You know, I think uh, we've just barely begun to see what B.I. can do. Uh, let, me, let me ask you just one question about yourself. Uh, the, the, the ankle, uh, that, that a lot of... You know, a lot of force went into that. Of course, you had to miss mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. Brooke, how's it feeling? Uh, how has it been just running up and down? And, and how do you think it, uh, you're, you're kind of projecting for the re la la next couple of months of the season? It's been great. You know, um, it was obviously tough in the moment. You know, I was worried it was more serious than it was. You know, as, as it turned out, just it looked a lot more serious. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, our training staff has done a fantastic job taking care of me, you know, uh, they got a lot of the swelling out as quickly as they could to help it heal and recover uh, more quickly. And then we, we've done such a good job rehabbing it as well. You know, they've taken me all the through all the necessary steps and, and done a great job of getting me back on the court to where I feel comfortable and it doesn't bother me at all. Um, you know, I, I think it's just going to continue to improve, you know. Um, but uh, again, you know, I, I tip my hat to the training staff. They're the best at what they do, and they did a fantastic job handling that. All right, a couple more basketball ones before, and then we'll kind of round things out with a couple of, of back to Marvel and other such questions. Uh, so in the game against Atlanta, Brooke, you had, I, I want to say it was three steals and two blocks in the first quarter, mm -hmm. and that kind of set the tone, just, just your length, getting getting your hands on balls uh, in that context. What, How important do you think defensively, and, and especially with the pairing with Julius, what are you looking yeah. to do on that end, and, and how do you think that can be important as you guys move forward this season? Yeah, I'm especially glad you brought it up with Julius as well, you know, because I think we, we comp both complement each other very well. Uh, and, uh, you know, when our team is firing on all cylinders defensively, when we're helping each other, when we have each other's back, and Julius and I are definitely a, a microcosm of that, uh, when, we're, when we're going and we have each other's back, we're helping the helper, we're, uh, we're in the passing lanes, and just playing actively and talking and communicating, most importantly, that, that fuels everything we do, and it just shows the kind of team we could be if we, if we habitually and continually lock up on the defensive end for a full 48 minutes a game. I mean, it, it creates offense for us. It, it puts us in transition where we're at our best. We have so many guys who, who excel at playing in, in that area. Uh, I think it, it makes us a team that uh, I think most teams would fear to play night in and night out. All right, how about this one from The Rock? Anything, anything about uh, your brother and kind of competition growing up, how that impacted things uh, as, you, as you guys got kind of yeah. from that? Um, I, just being able to play against Robin every day in the driveway or in the gym or wherever it was definitely immensely shaped me into the player I am today. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, uh, I'm, you know, I was actually just talking to one of my teammates uh, the other day about you know, how it's cool, you know, in my situation, being a, one of four brothers that are all roughly my size and all have a great basketball aptitude, you know, I can go home in the off season and, you know, be home in Fresno, uh, see my guys, be with my family, and then be in the gym morning and night. We can just be like, hey, want to play basketball? And the four of us can go out there and get like a really great real NBA workout, you know, with, with four NBA quality bigs, uh, get two on two in, whatever you want to do, post work, shooting, uh, play 21, just whatever it is, and, and get that solid workout wherever we are, you know, whether we're on vacation or in Europe or whatever it is, you know, we're always together. And so we have that kind of, that, uh, that fortunate situation where we can go get work together and, and help each other improve along the way. For sure. Okay, uh, so question from Joey Ramirez. That's him right there. 
what do you think about the X-Men joining the MCU? Um, I'm not, I don't know what the MCU is. Uh, so I'll, uh, it sounds like you have some thoughts on this. I do, you know, and I'm, I'm actually super excited about these prospects. Um, almost more excited about the Fantastic Four finally coming back just because Joey, I mean, these Fantastic Four movies, let's face it, haven't been the best. I think they haven't been up to the Fantastic Four standards. Uh, especially where they, they rank, obviously, in uh, comics history. Um, but, I, I mean, uh, what fanboy doesn't dream of having the Avengers, Spider-Man, the X-Men with Wolverine and Cyclops and the Fantastic Four, you know, the thing, Human Torch, Invisible Woman, all, all these people in the same movie. Uh, and I think, obviously, uh, you know, something else to look at, too, is Excuse me. Um, obviously, with Marvel having access to the Fox heroes again, you can finally get a great Doctor Doom on screen and give the MCU that great villain I think they've really been searching for. And to have all these guys facing off again against him would just be so, so epic. Be amazing. Okay, good answer. Uh, all right. This one, I thought, I'm going to ask this two ways because I thought the question was, uh, was what's, what's your top three favorite animals? But I think it's anime. Um, so I, I okay. so, so for, but, but give me your animals, no, no, I, yeah, three favorite I like animals. Both these questions, okay. they're different but the same. <laughs> and then anime. All right, animals. Yeah. I'd probably go. Um, I might just stay away from like pet animals. Okay. But I mean, we were talking about dogs and cats, so it's hard not to just go like dogs yeah, and just cats. Just say non-domestic, like non-domestic. Yeah, yeah. non-domestic. But yeah, yeah. dream pet. I'd pets. probably go with a uh, oh, dream pet, tiger. Definitely Tiger's number one by far. Sure. I'd probably go with, and this is from the year I uh, lived in Seattle when my brother was at UW. Uh, we'd always go to the Seattle Aquarium, and I'd have to see the sea otters. Mm. The sea otters. And they would play basketball, so there might be something there. You go, they, they can shoot the ball. You got on a uh, Fisherman's Wharf in San Fran ever? You can oh, see the, yeah. See the sea Definitely. lions sound the sea hanging? lions. Pretty fun to hang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I might get to my, I'll get to my third animal in a second. That reminds, I went to the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk one time. And we were on like the little log ride or whatever, the flume, the flume ride. And it was myself, Rob, and two of our other friends. And we were like, it's kind of on the side of the boardwalk. So you can like see out onto the beach. Like that's kind of where it ends. And we just look down there and there's this huge like, I don't even know if it was like a sea lion. Like it had tusks and everything. Like, do they have walruses in Santa Cruz? Like, it couldn't have been a walrus, right? Like, why am I looking at Joey? He can like, look it up. Because Joey has the Google question, that. But yeah, Google that. But like, it was like yep. it was this mammoth, like sea lion or something. It had tusks, so it could have been a wal. I don't know, but it was like a big. Google that. Some sort of big sea mammal. <laughs> That's right. It was some sort of big sea mammal. So we're uh -huh. in seventh grade and we get this idea. We're going to go see this guy. And so we start approaching him really quick. And I probably got to like, we were probably like right here. Yeah. And there's, he's probably the size, no, he's bigger than mine. He's probably the size <laughs> of like on this chair. Okay. And so like I'm, at this point, I'm only like 6'1 or something like that in seventh grade. I'm like 5'9". So yeah, right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so, you know, yeah, it takes all us in that. But yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. approaching <laughs> the guy like, I'm, I'm going to, you know, he might be in danger or something. I might need to help the guy. Because, you know, obviously they tell you, like, humans don't mess with wildlife. Sure. And Little Brook didn't know this. Like, so don't just don't mess with wildlife. Leave them in their natural habitat. But I was like, I'm going to help this guy. Another like, PSA. He <laughs> didn't need any help, but I was going to go help him. And so he barked so loud at me. I thought he was going to attack me, and then that would be it. I was going to die. Fortunately, that's all there was to the story. I hope that buildup didn't, like, leave you a letdown. But it was really scary in the moment. And that just made me think of that when you brought the sea lions. Got it. But my third favorite animal would probably be, hmm, tiger, sea otter. My, my favorite animal is a penguin, in case oh, you were curious. penguin is really good. Fun. Yeah. 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 That is fun. Yeah. And That's some Magellanic fun. penguins can live in, in California-like climates in really? Argentina. So yeah. you could potentially get one. Now, look, I, you've done well for yourself. So, you made some money. So maybe you just put a little penguin habitat outside yeah. your, your spot. The thing is, I always wanted a tiger and a sea otter. And I get a little penguin habitat. That's good. 
These people so, are gonna be so mad at us. So after think about all this, like approaching all these sea lions or whatever. And I, I disagree. I, I think you're well within your. Yeah. I think that's very fair. I'd take um, good care of them, but my third one's an elephant. Then an elephant. elephant. Okay, respect. Yeah. I might be a little tougher to have outside the outside yeah. the house. I need a little more space. Yeah, um, just a little. A couple more for Brooke uh, on our Toyota Voices chat here. Again, 41 years together, the Lakers and Toyota. And oh, well, did you want to do the anime? Yeah. Type? Okay. I'll do the anime. Yeah. All right. Um, I'd probably go pretty deep cut with the first one, but I mean, he might be an anime fan, so I'm a big Miyazaki guy, so I'd probably go with the Sherlock Hound TV series. And then I, I would also go with uh, Lupin the Third as well. So Lupin, Sherlock Hound, and then my third one, hmm. You know, I'm going to go with a more recent one my friend Brian put me on. My friend, friends Brian and Kirk, actually. Both Shout out to Brian and Kirk. Yeah, exactly. There you go, guys. I don't say I didn't do anything for you. I'd uh, go One Punch Man. Hilarious. I, like, I love it. I didn't get it at first. Like, I was watching, at first, I watched, like, the first episode. I was just like, I don't get it. Like, is this serious? Is this just it? Like, I didn't understand the humor at first, but it's fantastic. One Punch Man, definitely. All right, cool. So, uh, Joey has fact-checked. Uh, by the way, and no, let's see, was it no uh, no walruses Walrus. in San Francisco? It had more tusks. Of, it's more of an Arctic. Arctic. Right, right, yeah. but it <laughs> had tusks, whatever it was. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying it was a walrus. I'm just saying it had tusks. Probably, probably it was wasn't. really big. Probably wasn't a walrus, but hey, may, you know, you never know. You yeah. Never know. And all right, last thing for you from, from Chris Tiller. <laughs> if you could star in any movie or TV show, which one would you choose and Ooh, why? Oh, man. So... I, I always, I've been campaigning for this for a while, since before the Force Awakens came out. Make it public. I, ju I just want to be a Wookiee in one of the Star Wars movies. And not even like, like, and this is the thing that like kind of is like, how come I can't get it done? Because like, I don't need to be a Wookiee like in like 80% of the movie or anything like that. Like, I just need to walk in the background of one scene. I don't need to say anything. No one needs to know it's me. I just need to be able to like, look and be like, hey, Mike, like, See, that's me. Yeah. Well, we missed it. It happened that quick. But like, sure. I just need to know. That's all. Sure. And it'd just be like our little secret. Like Lucasfilm, Disney, just, you know, I'd love to be a Wookiee in one of the films. Just, just for a little bit. I'm glad you got a chance to get that out there. Yeah. And, and I hope that this platform with Toyota Voices it will get that done for you. I'm, I'm not, I can't promise anything, but it's a pretty big reach. Thank you, Toyota. <laughs> You're a great partner. <laughs> That's Brooke Lopez. Uh, I'm Mike Trudell. We appreciate you guys watching as always. Thanks, Brooke. We appreciate it, man. All right. No problem. All right, Thank see you. you guys.